OK. So now it's time to draw some consequences. And the main consequence is going to be, uh, have to do with uh, applications to graphing. But we'll see tomorrow and for the rest of the course that this is, this is even more significant. It's, it's significant to all of the rest of calculus. I'm going to list three consequences which you're quite familiar with already. So the first one is if f prime is positive, then f is increasing. And the second one is if f prime is negative, then f is decreasing. And the last one seems like the simplest, but even this one alone is the key to everything. If f prime is 0, then f is constant. These are three consequences now of the um, of the mean value theorem. And let me show you how they're proved. I just told you that they were true, maybe, uh, a while ago. And certainly, I mentioned the first two. The, the, the last one was so simple that we maybe just swept it under the rug. You did use it on a problem set once or twice. But it turns out that this actually requires proof, and we're going to give the proof right now. Now the, the way that the proof goes is simply to write down, to rewrite star, rewrite our formula, which says that f of b minus f of a over b minus a is equal to f prime of c. And you see, I've written it from left to right here to say that the right-hand side, information about the derivative, is going to be giving me information about the function. That's the way I'm going to read it. In order to express this, though, I'm going to just uh, uh, rewrite it a couple of times here. So here's f of a I'm multiplying through by the denominator. And now I'm going to write it in another customary form for the mean value theorem, which is f of b is equal to f of a plus f prime of c times b minus a. All right, so here's another version. I should probably have put this one in a box to begin with anyway. And just changing it around algebraically, it's this fact here. They're the same thing. And now, with the formula written in this form, I claim that I can check these three facts. So let's start with the first one. I'm going to set things up always so that A is less than B. And that's the setup of the, of the uh, theorem. And so that means that B minus A is positive. All right which means that this factor over here is positive number. If f prime is positive, then, which is what happens in the first case, that's the assumption that we're making, then this is a positive number, and so f of b is more than f of a. Which means that it's increasing. It goes up as, as uh, the value goes up. Similarly, if f prime of c is negative, then this is a positive times a negative number. This is negative. It's f of b is less than f of a. So it goes the other way. So 
maybe I'll write it this way. And finally, if f prime of c is 0, then f of b is equal to f of a, which if you apply it to all possible ends means if you can do it for every interval, which you can, then that means that f is constant. It never gets to change values. Well, you might have believed these, these facts already, but I, I just want to emphasize to you that this turns out to be the, the one key link between infinitesimals, between limits, and these actual differences. Before, we were saying that the difference quotient was approximately equal to a derivative. Now we're saying that it's exactly equal to a derivative, although we don't know exactly which point to use. It's some point in between. All right, uh, I'm going to be deducing some other consequences in a second, but let me stop for a second to make sure that everybody's on board, especially since I've finished the blackboards here before we. Everybody happy? One, one question. 